Today we're at the home of one of the most famous football figures in England. And it's not a player. We're visiting Rotherham. We're visiting the father of one Howard Webb. So Bill, Bill Webb, we're in the home that Howard Webb grew up in. Were these windows safe? Um, he did play football. Uh, they used to play football on the street and they used to love playing Kirby. Have you ever played Kirby? No, I've never heard of it. Kirby is, is the idea, is to, it wasn't to score goals, it was to hit the ball against the curb and make it come back to you. Right. And there was an art in that, and being able to make a ball, hit the curb, come back to you, so you could do it again. Yeah. And he used to play Kirby. Was until he his, it? It, was quite, it was a cultured player actually. Um, Howard, yeah, he, he, he was um, a promising young lad, I took him down to to Rotherham United to play for Rotherham Juniors, um, but Howard wasn't self-preservation with Howard. He, 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 he looked, was afraid, you mean, was he? Well, he was okay if he was on his own within ten yards, but if he went up ahead of the ball and the centre half or the centre forward went up against him, I knew as as the coach on the touchline who was going to win the ball. They used to have a word for that, wasn't it? Nesh. Well, yes, that yes, that's the word, and it still is. Uh, is self-preservation. Um, yeah, he, he was disappointed, but it, but he, he, he did it as well because it was down at Rotherham. Just as Rotherham really, fanatic. Just as, well, it still is. Still uh, is. People <laughs> make out that is, you know, is is well, we there's history in that with Rotherham uh, and and Man United, and I can tell you this: Rotherham is his one and only passion. Yeah. Always has been. Always will be. The only United. The only United. The other has developed as a myth, the supporting of Manchester United. I've, I've got a, I'm going to guess now that actually Howard, and probably you, are slightly amused by it. Or is it just annoying? It's annoying. It's not amusing. It's annoying. It's, it, it's amusing because everybody who knows Howard knows it's, it's a myth. There is a fanatical Rotherham fan. Howard went home and away. He went to 82 grounds as a schoolboy. Watching rather home and away, he had all the kit and everything else, and he, he really had his boyhood heroes of of um, John Breckin and and uh, Ronnie Moore, and his all time favourite uh, was Tony Towner. Mm. You know, he had some fantastic. Yeah, but, but it's a, just a myth. But because it's so absurd and so ridiculous, you can. Well, well you're saying you you're, you're saying it's a myth. You see, it's annoying. And the only reason, not the only reason why it's annoying, it's annoying simply because lots of people believe it to be true. And that's the annoyance he gets from it. Mm. Not, not that, you know, if he thinks it's rather ludicrous, but he's, he gets annoyed when people make snide remarks about it, but they're not making snide remarks, trying to make a, gain a, a bit of a joke out of it, because they really mean it. I really mean it. We know he's a Miller and we know he's a Rotherham United yeah. fan. He enjoyed Wembley recently. Oh. Looking back to those days when Howard aspired to being a, f a footballer uh, and, and I think you were quite brutal with the truth and yeah. told him we wouldn't be. How old was he then? How old was he? 15, 16. 15, 16. Started refereeing at 17. And who, was it your influence? You, you, well you I, I, was, I was then I, I was then I, I heavily, and I always have been in administration. I'd retired from refereeing by then, and I used to take him with the school and with the team that he played for, Bethel Rovers, which was a, a young nursery side of Rotherham United. And um, at 17, I said to him, Howard, you're not going to make it as a, as a footballer. I'm sorry, and I think he realised himself. Why don't you take up the whistle? I said, I've had a good career out there. I said, I've got lots of friends. Most of my friends are from refereeing, so that's a, a, a different thing. I said, try it, you never know, you just never know. You might even get to be referee of the season. He was, he was reluctant to referee, you had to drag him kicking and screaming, did you? He, he looked at referees and there was bald old men, you know. Well, he's a bald And man. he's a bald old man now and he, he accepts that, yeah. you know. But yeah, and that's how we got into it and that's how we started. Started off to try and earn a bit of extra money. And then, of course, what actually happened were people were coming up and saying, You've got energy, lad. I think you can go a little way. I once remember going to um, Glass Outen uh, when they were in the. It had gone on a little bit then, it was on the Northern Counties East. 
and it was his very first Premier game on the Northern Counties East Class Out and and, and I'm stood at side of the coach for Class Out in the Premier League of the Northern Counties East. And I'm talking to him and the guy didn't know who I was and the guy said to me, I'm reporting this referee. Got my heckles up. Got my heckles up. I thought, how dare you? It's his first game, give him a chance. I said, hold on a bit, Fran, be a bit more friendly than that. I said, it's his very first game in Premiership. He says, his very first game. He said, I was going to congratulate him on the letter. He said, that it makes him more so now. So, yeah, I realised from an early age that, and he kept, he kept all his assessments, kept all his assessments, and he, he, he's got them at home, and there must be 200 assessments, and you only have to read those assessments to see how he was progressing well. Out of the 200, there's probably two that's indifferent. Are you trying to say that potential was spotted before you actually spotted it? My brother, my yeah. brother spotted it. Very first game, very first game, we were in my kit, detachable collar and cuffs, white laces, big 18s turnovers. And then I took him to this young game, 12 year old, and I cringed on the touchline, I cringed and I thought, no son, you ain't going to make it, you're an even better footballer than a referee, and you're not going to make it as a footballer. And I took my brother with me, who was a Southern League referee, and he said to me, Billy, you're an arse on lad. He said, I can see potential in this lad. He says, give him a chance, he could probably make it. Mm -hmm. um, well, but he probably made it, make it to be a, a competent official, not a World Cup final referee. I think it's fair to say he has made it. Yes. I think it's fair to say. So, Howard's biggest critic is his dad. Is that still true to this day? Yes, it does. It has to do, doesn't it? Because otherwise I'm false. And, and, and we, we are built on trust and understanding. And, and I'm there, I'm there, and I'll, I'll be candid with him and I'll tell him when I think he's got it wrong, but I'll also have a shoulder for him. Even now, there's a shoulder for him if he needs it. Because there's some days he comes home, you know. My wife, he'll come to our house and he'll drop me off because he takes me to every game, and, he can, and he'll press the bell to come in, and my wife knows what sort of game he's at. If he goes ding, he knows, he thinks, oh my God. Be wary, be tactful, you know. If he goes ding, 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 <laughs> he knows he's had a great game, and and he comes in and he's full of himself. He doesn't retract. Even now, he retracts into his shell because he wants perfection personified, and he's not always going to get it, is he? So yeah, uh, there's always that kind of. There's always a shoulder there for me to cry on, but there's also um, a brute, brute honesty that I'm not going to tell him falsehoods. I'm not going to tell him. Things that you know, I'm, uh, Ian doesn't want that neither. 2010, wonderful year for Howard Webb. Champions League finally, he refereed the World Cup final referee in South Africa. And you went to watch him there. Just what was that experience like? It was horrendous. I'd watched him. I, I was actually staying with David Ellery, uh, uh, shopping with a, a family, uh, a, a man called Ali Soldatis, uh, an ex. FIFA referee who had been good enough to put me up for the five weeks I was there and for the last two weeks I was there David Ellery came out and stayed with us and so a world authority on refereeing and he kept saying to me gonna go far this lad you know gonna go far the performance against uh, Switzerland and Spain wonderful performance he'll get another game on centre of that and then he had uh, Italy versus Slovenia and he came home and he beat the game with me and he says wonderful performance. He said he's really, really hitting the peaks. He says, uh, wonderful. And then he had Brazil versus Chile. And we came home in the car and he's saying, on the strength of that, Billy, he'll get a semi-final at least. And so to watch that were fantastic. And then my time was up in, in South Africa. So did you know I came back? I came back on the Wednesday before the World Cup. I came back because I couldn't afford it. I'd been there four weeks. I couldn't afford another fortnight stopping there. And I thought, hey, we're going to go no further. So on the Wednesday, me and the, uh, Mike Malarkey's father came back. And we came back on the Wednesday. And I'm a keen gardener. And I thought to my wife, and I said to my wife, I'm going to do some gardening tomorrow, love it. wants tidying up. So I went in the garden all day, came back in, sat down for my tea at four o'clock, 
Obviously the World Cup's on, so I've got the television station, uh, television on, football station, and across the bottom it said, Howard Webb confirmed as a World Cup final. I'd only been back from South Africa, 12 hours, 5,000 miles, and the next day I was back out in South Africa. <laughs> and I went, and I went to the World Cup. Oh, you have little faith. You should have stayed. Well, it's funny actually, a little story here that I went with uh, Mike Malarkey's dad and Darren Cairns' dad, they were his two linesmen. And, and Darren Cairns' dad didn't come back. And I said, why are you coming back with us? He says, I've had a dream. And you, you've heard this, haven't you? And he's, I'm not telling her a word of life. He said, I've had a dream. He said, I've dreamt they'll have Spain in the final. I said, you're kidding. He says, no. He said, I'm telling you, he, he will get Spain in the final. So I'm not coming. He didn't come home. So he met us at the airport when we went back, 24,000 miles, 12 there and 12 back yeah. to South Africa, and he just burst out laughing, yeah. saying, I tell you so, you have a little faith. So then we went to the final, and then saw that unfold in front of me. It was horrendous. Horrendous. Can you imagine it being your son? And he's, you know, and I'm going to go on record, I don't mind telling you this now then. I think the Dutch were a disgrace that night. I honestly do. I think not only did they spoil it for two billion people watching, they spoiled it for 80,000 in the crowd. They spoiled it for me, his wife, his mother and his kids. But more than that, they spoiled it for him. It was his final, and I'm getting emotional now, mm -hmm. it was his final as much as theirs. But they really, and I, I will never ever forgive the Dutch. Because it was the Dutch, it weren't the Spanish. The Spanish only, only retaliated on occasions because of what were being dished out to them. And I just felt so sorry for me, lad. And you know, it's that sort of lad that after the game he sat down so despondent in the changing rooms. And he went and he sat under the shower and the shower's running on him. And he didn't get out of the shower until his friend and colleague, Darren McCann, uh, Darren Cam said to him, How would Look at the texts we're getting. You're getting texts from all over the world, from prominent people all over the world, saying, bloody hard game, impossible game to handle. You handled it as good as anybody could possibly handle it. And, 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 and that came, to, you know, that came uh, about. And, 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 and from there onwards, it lifted him and, 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 and made him feel better because I don't know if you remember, Alan, only five weeks prior to that, he'd had the um, European Cup final. And everything there went superb. The referee, the decisions, the acceptance of his decisions, um, the crowd were acceptance, they were brilliant to him. He had a wonderful, wonderful time out, out in, um, in the European Cup final. So different to the World Cup final. That was a, a graphic memory that you've shared with us, Bill. Yeah. Uh, I thank you for yeah. that. And I'm sure any father can appreciate just what you and the, the family and yeah. your son yeah. went through in those circumstances. When you watch on TV, as you will often do, yeah. say a Premier League yeah. game, what are your feelings then? Um, how nervous do you get for I got, I got terribly nervous, depending on the game, whether I watch it on television or whether I watch it in live at the stadium. Um, I, I get terribly, terribly nervous. Um, and the other thing is, I look at it and I look around the stadium and I see 75,000 at Old Trafford. And I think, Billy, Billy, get a grip of yourself. You're an ex-collier. You're an ex-miner. You haven't got a qualification to your name. You haven't got, you know, and there is your son. It's enriched my life a thousandfold. I know many men of my age who have got slippers, pipe and a pint of Guinness and don't watch the match on the television. But I'm in there in the thick of it. And not only am I in the thick of it, it's my son who's controlling these. And I just think exceptional things to happen to ordinary people. You know, I'm just an ordinary Joe Soap. But how lucky I am that I've got a son that's give me uh, my richness of life uh, and I just I just love it I, I love walking down the street with him 
I get more pleasure in it than Howard actually. We walk down the street and because it's Howard, everybody wants an inch of him. Everybody wants an autograph for a photo. They might take a photo of him, they might scrub it off when, when they've turned his bike, <laughs> but they'll come up and they want a photo or an autograph or a talk. They want to say, hey up Howard, and, and they want him to, people to know that they, he, they know, he knows them and they know him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I just get a pleasure out of that, I stand back and I'm like a little boy at school and I think, you know, I'm so, so proud of him. And you know, I'll say this, it's so easy, you know, Alan, we've not mentioned this yet. It's so easy when you're starting out, when you're on the bottom ladder, to have humility, integrity, honesty, all of the accolades. But as you gradually climb the ladders of success, eventually one has dropped off and then another has dropped off. And another is dropping. So that when you get to the very top in your ivory castle, you forgot where you've come from. And you haven't got humility and integrity and honesty. They've all gone by the way. And I'm glad to say that Howard is on the top ladder, but he's still got humility, he's still got integrity, he's still got honesty. And and people people will come up to me and they'll slap me on the back and say, You must be proud of the lad. For what he's achieved. And you know, Alan, I'm more proud in the lad than what he's achieved. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, people say to me, what a lovely lad he is. And I say, ah, you're saying that because, because I'm his dad. You, you're saying something that I know that you'll say, he'll want to hear that. And, and I thought he was saying to me, you're saying that because I'm his dad. But I don't. When people say to me now, I honestly believe they really are being sincere. Because you've met him on a number of occasions, and, and, and you'll only confirm, I'm sure you will, what I'm saying is that is, is unique in that for what it achieved, it's not gone to his head one little bit. Now, if roles were reversed with me and my son, and we went to a party, say, now I'd burst through the doors, I'd sling the doors, bike, and I'd say, right everybody, I'm here, we can start. Yeah. Where Howard will wait until the part is in full swing and creep in and creep in and stand at the back and and not want to be not not want to be known because he's not he's not ignorant but he doesn't want no fuss. I'd want all the fuss in the world. I couldn't cope with it. As the old saying goes, Bill, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And Howard exemplifies that, and it's easy to see what a good guy he is. Lovely family and great to talk to you. Thank you.